Dr. Clayman, thank you for being here with us tonight. What about your approach to the League of Nations contrasts with the literature before 2005, 2006? Uh, my approach focuses more on the people who worked for the League of Nations, uh, both the bureaucrats that were hired by the organization and also the social scientists um, of different hues that came to work for it. And I work from the League of Nations sources out towards the member states. So I also look at governments and how they interact with the League, uh, but I start with the League of Nations and then move out. What influence did the League of Nations economic and financial organization have on the development of the post-war economic infrastructure under the UN auspices? Uh, well, first of all, it gave rise to a series of organizations. So the very fact that there had been an economic and financial organization established a precedent for more organization, which is surprising in itself because everybody always thinks the League of Nations failed, so why have more organizations? But it's also that the ideas, practices and people in the IMF, the World Bank, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, as well as some of the other elements of the UN's own, the United Nations Organization's own economic and social agenda, grows out of, of the work of the League of Nations. And there were lots of people who were trained up by the League and who'd worked out what they wanted to do by the 1930s, and the UN gave them the opportunity to do it. How did the League of Nations and its constituents come to redefine security in the interwar period? They thought about security more broadly. There's a British, famous British military historian called Little Hart who said if you want to understand peace, you need to understand war. Uh, and so their experience in the First World War really was that security was as much about controlling economic resources, so raw materials, particularly food, the blockade of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Central Powers was an important part of that story. Uh, the, the need for manpower and woman power, both at the front but also in the factories, and, and to control the movement of people as well because it's about fortifying your borders. So that changes what the, the League has to be too. It's not just about disarmament in military terms, it's also about controlling and, and, and facilitating economic cooperation so that states make peace, not war.